Okay. All right. Excellent. And <laughs> I just got your email. Of course. Yeah. All good. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We'll give people a couple of minutes to uh, keep coming on in, but really glad you can join us here to talk about retirement. Should be an excellent presentation. All right, I think I might get started just because we have an action-packed evening. Um, so, hello, welcome. Um, my name is Maya Matterman. I'm on the staff of AARP Massachusetts. Today, we're going to be focusing on strategies for retirement planning, so strategies for today and tomorrow, because it's really important to know how to stretch your dollar to really preserve your hard-earned money. Um, this, this month, ARP Massachusetts is offering financial programs every Thursday, so we maintain a deep focus on the health and financial security of people over 50 um, and their families, and you'll find that reflected in our offerings and resources and in our advocacy. This webinar today is brought to you by AARP. So 65 years ago, the American Association of Retired Persons was founded by a retired high school principal, Dr. Eth Ethel Percy Andrus. From the start, AARP focused on preserving the financial security and health security of older people. What's important to know is that with so many of our members still in the workforce, we are no longer called the American Association of Retired Persons, we're just AARP. AARP strengthens communities and advocates for what matters most to the more than 100 million Americans, 50 plus in their families, health security, financial stability, and personal fulfillment. I did want to take a couple of minutes to share how AARP is fighting for you. We're advocating across the state and all the way to the United States Capitol to protect Medicare, Social Security, and your financial security. Last year, AARP led the fight to lower prescription drug prices in Medicare, and we won. Millions of older Americans are now starting to save money on their medications. Here in Massachusetts, we fought for and won several tax relief policies, including increasing the tax credit for a dependent child, disabled adult, or senior from $180 to $310 in the taxable year 2023, and then to $440 in the taxable year 2024 and beyond per dependent while eliminating the dependent slash child cap. Um, this will help hundreds of thousands of Massachusetts family caregivers. So that was a big win for us. We also doubled the senior circuit breaker tax credit from $1,200 to $2,400 to lower the overall tax burden for more than 100,000 taxpayers age 65 
and older with low income who are, um, own or rent residential property in Massachusetts as their primary residence. Next, we increased the rental deduction cap from $3,000 to $4,000, impacting approximately 881,000 Massachusetts renters. We also increased the earned income tax credit from 30 to 40% of the federal credit, helping three, sorry, 396,000 taxpayers with incomes under 57,000. So that was a big win for our team. Um, fifth, we increased the senior property tax volunteer program maximums from $1,500 to $2,000. So municipalities can allow for certain seniors to reduce from their property tax by participating in the senior work off program. Finally, we expanded access to retirement saving options for all workers without a workplace option. Did you lose me? You were, oh, man. you were frozen for a bit. So welcome back. Oh, goodness. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll, I just have a couple more points and then I'll wrap up. So please um, bookmark the AARP Massachusetts page to keep up with all the advocacy milestones we achieve in collaboration with our volunteers and members. That website is aarp.org backslash Massachusetts. To keep, with us, keep up with us further, please follow us on social media. We want to count you as one of our thousands of followers and fans, and we post all about our events, our wins, and our call to actions. During today's program, if you'd like to ask a question, click on the Q&A button and type in your question. If you want to see the transcript, you can click on the CC at the bottom right of your screen and turn on the captions. After today, the recording will be sent to you along with all the slides. So that is my um, brief spiel. And with that, I'll turn it over to Renee, our spectacular presenter, um, to tell you a little bit more about retirement strategies. Thank you so much. And if you can pull up the slides, please, and we'll start with the first one. Well, good evening. Welcome to today's AARP Retirement Planning presentation. My name is Renee Sennis, and I am delighted to be a volunteer with this wonderful organization. I'm part of the AARP Speakers Bureau. Next slide, please. Remember, this presentation is intended to provide general guidance, not specific legal or financial advice. Individual circumstances may differ and should be taken into consideration before acting. As a representative of AARP, I can't make uh, specific recommendations or give you advice, but hopefully the information we cover today will help you to make informed decisions. Be sure to consult a professional for advice regarding your personal situation. Let's take a moment, gather a paper or a pen and, uh, some pe and a pencil, and then we'll take a look at the agenda for today's presentation. Next. Next slide. All right, this evening we're going to share information about the most important aspects of your financial health. As you define your own financial goals, set your priorities, prepare for retirement, and take steps to secure your future. We'll provide information that will help you recognize the steps you need to take to prepare for retirement, no matter where you are with your finances. Remember, personal finance is personal. It's not one size fits all. As such, it's best to consult with a professional and to make a plan that's best for you. AARP provides a number of resources for you to refer to as you take your financial journey, and we'll cover many of them in this presentation. In this session, you'll learn about ways to determine how much money you'll need for retirement compared to how much money you've already saved strategies to bridge the gap if you discover the gap, and there'll be time for questions. As you, as Maya said, please enter them in the chat if you can. Please do be cautious, only share limited personal financial information as this is a group setting. 
So next slide. How much money do you need to retire? Well, is it 75% of your current income? 100% of your current income? 110% or more of your current income? The answer is, it depends. So close your eyes. Come on, everybody, close your eyes. It's been a beautiful Thursday in October, and you're retired. You are not at an AARP seminar. Where did you spend your day? Were you out playing golf or my new passion, pickleball? Were you taking college courses or pursuing a much loved hobby? Were you gardening with your children or grandchildren or curled up on the couch with a book? Were you at your summer home thinking about packing up next month to return to your winter home? Have you started a small business or decided to work part-time? Okay, open your eyes. So, what did your retirement look like? If retirement is lazy days at home or playing with the grandchildren, you may do very well on 75% of your current income. If your idea of retirement is to play golf or tennis or pickleball at every top rated course in the US, you may well need 110% or more of your current income. If you've relocated to a state that's less expensive than where you currently live, you may be able to take a significant percentage of the sale price of your current home and kick your retirement portfolio up a notch. Retirement planning is more than just the numbers. It's about your dreams, hopes, aspirations, lifestyle, and interests. It's your vision of your future. And then it's about the numbers. Next slide, please. Today, we're going to walk through the steps of calculating how much money you will need for retirement. You'll meet a hypothetical couple doing the same work so that you can refer to their example as you begin to make your own calculations. At the end of the presentation, you'll be able to identify the resource needed to allow you to calculate your own projected needs. We'll be using a helpful and free tool available on aarp.org money for this section the AARP Retirement Calculator. The link is in the handout that you will receive. We encourage you to use this tool to make your own calculations. Next slide. Let's meet Pat and Ronnie. This presentation will follow them as they calculate their retirement needs. Pat, who is um, male, is 55. He works full time and earns $60,000 a year. Ronnie, who is female, is 52. She also works full-time with a salary of $50,000 a year. They both plan to retire at age 67, and they're now saving about 8% or $8,800 of their income for retirement. This includes funds contributed from their employer matches. They've decided to sit down together to figure out how much money they need. The first calculation they need to make is their current savings. That is, how much do they currently have in their retirement funds? Let's talk about those numbers before we move on to our calculations. Next slide, please. A common source of retirement income for many Americans is a retirement plan through your employer. Some of you may already have these accounts while others may not. The more common kinds are called 401ks, 403bs, and 403as. These are often referred to as defined contribution plans, which means a type of plan where the employee contributes a fixed portion of their income to their retirement. In a defined contribution plan, the burden is on you, the employee, to make decisions and to take action. You decide whether to enroll, how much to contribute, and how to invest. As a tip, please, if you have these types of accounts, Ensure that you are getting maximum matching funds from your employer if they are available. So if your employer is matching 4% of your contribution and you're only putting in 3%, it's going to be important for you to figure out if you can afford to raise your contribution because every percentage of employer money um, that you leave on the table is free money that you're walking away from. The less common type of employer-sponsored retirement accounts are traditional pension plans, also called a defined benefit. Your employer funds the plan, and once you have met the requirement using a number of years worked, when you retire, you'll receive a, sp 
specific or defined benefit every month. We'll discuss non-employer plans such as IRAs and Roth IRAs at a later point in this presentation. But if you currently have them, be sure to include these amounts along with any other types we've reviewed here in your calculations of the money you currently have. The best place, of course, to find out this information is to pull a current statement, either online or a paper copy, to help you with your calculations. Next slide, please. For many of us, Social Security is the most important part of our retirement picture, and deciding when to claim is a big decision. The amount of Social Security you will collect over your lifespan will depend on, one, your lifetime earnings. Social Security will average your highest income over 35 years. This is really important for you to understand because many people wrongly believe that working part-time in retirement will lower your benefits. That's not the case. Working part-time may just, may just toss out one of your working years when you were 18 or 19 or 20 in that 35-year calculation. The amount you'll collect will also depend upon the age at which you start collecting and the number of years you collect. So when you claim is a very personal and important decision. You qualify for Social Security by paying Social Security tax while you're working. You or your spouse need to have worked and paid Social Security tax for 10 years in order to be eligible, and Social Security will then, as I said, average your highest 35 years. There are also survivor benefits, spousal benefits, and disability benefits, all of which have their own qualification criteria. Please refer to AARP Social Security Resource Center for more information, and that link is in your handout. And there's also a great calculator that AARP has for Social Security. Next slide, please. So in this slide, we're going to take some time talking about what your monthly payout is in Social Security and how to make the best decision regarding when you take Social Security. When it comes to claiming, you have choices that will impact your benefit. One option is to consider waiting in order to increase your monthly benefit you can receive your full benefit at your normal or full retirement age, which is somewhere between 66 or 67, depending upon your birth year. If you were born between 1943 and 1954, your full retirement age is 66. If you were born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age is, 1960, is 67. If you were born in 1955 to 1960, well, obviously you don't get to retire. No, I'm only joking. Your full retirement age goes up in increments of two months, from 66 and two months in 1955 to 66 and four months in 1956, all the way up until 1960 when you reach age 67. You can choose to receive your benefits early, as early as age 62 but your benefit will be reduced by 25 to 30% depending upon your full retirement age. And that reduction is for the remainder of your life. You don't go back to your full amount when you reach your full retirement age. Remember, that's for the remainder of your life. So it's important to consider how this will impact your family and not just your own benefit because it will impact survivors' benefits as well. You can also delay your benefit beyond full retirement age. This increases your benefit amount by 8% a year. 8% guaranteed, that's just amazing, up to age 70. So it can pay to wait. So this chart that we're looking at now shows how claiming your, uh, how your claiming age can impact your benefit. Pat, um, our spouse, our husband, is his full benefit is $2,157 per month at his full retirement age of 67, which is shown on the pink bar labeled 67. Any benefits received earlier than that, shown in pink and red, 62 to 66, you can see are reduced. And any benefits starting after that, showing pink and purple, ages 68 to 70, are higher. If you haven't yet, be sure to create your own personal My Social Security account on Social Security's website 
ssa.gov slash my account. For my SSA, you can calculate your expected payout, apply for benefits, and monitor Social Security news and updates. The link is going to be on your handout. And I just have to say that Social Security has a fabulous website. For a government website, it's very user-friendly and it's got a wealth of information and a lot of calculators that you can use to do some hypothetical planning. Deciding when to claim is a personal decision that only you can make. Remember though, the impact of your claiming isn't just on your retirement benefit. It also affects the survivor benefit your spouse will receive if he or she outlives you. Now, as we know, in 2023, Social Security announced the largest COLA in 40, for, in 40 years. 2023 benefits went up 8.7%. Social Security benefits will increase by 3.2% in 2024. That adds about $50 monthly to the average retirement benefit consumers will receive beginning January 2024. Next slide, please. So Pat and Ronnie plan to retire at 67, which is considered to be their full retirement age. And in social security lingo, this is called your FRA, based on the years in which Pat and Ronnie were born. When they take their social security payouts, Pat will receive 2,157. Ronnie will receive 1,890. But if Pat waits till age 70, he would get 2,675 and Ronnie would get $2,344 per month. That's an increase of 24%. So figure out these numbers for yourself. Use the AARP Social Security Calculator at aarp.org slash social security benefits. As an important note, as of 2023, the average monthly Social Security retirement benefit is $1,827, or approximately $21,924 annually. In other words, you likely cannot live on Social Security alone. Note, too, that the maximum Social Security benefit, depending upon your lifetime earnings, is currently $3,627, or 43,524. Next slide, please. So how much will you spend in retirement? Will you spend more, stay the same, or start living more modestly to stretch your dollars further? The AARP retirement calculator that I've been talking about makes an educated guess about your current lifestyle by starting with your current income, deducting employment and income taxes, and subtracting the amount you're saving. What's left is your current lifestyle figure. The calculator assumes that in retirement, you will need 85% of this amount to live and have a lifestyle that's close to the lifestyle you have now because expenses are typically lower for retirees. This amount becomes your retirement spending goal with adjustments for inflation each year. You can adjust this amount in the lifestyle area of the calculator by selecting a retirement lifestyle that is lower than, higher than, or the same as your expenses today. The more moderate lifestyle is assumed to be 75% of your current, um, current income, the more extravagant lifestyle 95% or more. The calculator allows you to key into a specific percentage that will be applied to your current lifestyle. To determine how much you'll spend in retirement, make sure that you account for all potential expenses and be conservative in your investments. It's better to have too much than uh, not enough. Now that Pat and Ronnie have compiled all their numbers, we can easily review where they stand when it comes to meeting their retirement goals. Pat currently has $100,000 in a 401k, Ronnie has $75,000 in a 403B. Neither of them will receive a pension. At full retirement age, age 67, Pat will receive $2,157 per month from Social Security, and Ronnie will receive $1,890 per month. They plan to live a similar lifestyle in retirement, which they've decided, based on research, to estimate at 75% of their current income. 
So here we have an example from the AARP retirement calculator, and we can see how their retirement savings span the years. The dark green that you see is their net income after savings and taxes. The light green is their social security benefits. The gray represents funds they will withdraw from their retirement savings, and the red represents the amount of shortfall for each year of retirement. And if your uh, projections don't have any red, it means you fortunately do not have any shortfall. In Pat and Ronnie's case, we can see that the shortfall begins at about age 82, which is the same time that Pat and Ronnie's retirement savings, the gray that we're looking at, is projected to start running out. Pat and Ronnie are going to have a shortfall of $38,177.21 if they don't make any changes. So what can they do to bridge the gap? Well, let's explore some strategies that can help. But before we move on, you may wonder regarding the drop-off, if you wanna just back up the slide, please, regarding that drop-off that's shown in the chart, the retirement calculator defaults to a life expectancy of 87 for men and 90 for women. So what this is showing is that Pat has predeceased Ronnie. After one spouse's projected life expectancy, the calculator assumes that living expenses will be cut in half. You can manually adjust several aspects of the calculator, including life expectancy. We have done so in calculating Pat and Ronnie's numbers with a life expectancy of 84 and 87 respectively. We've also manually adjusted their inflation to 2%, the default is 2.5%, and adjusted their living expenses to be 75%, the default is 85%. And note, of course, that you can run multiple different scenarios for yourself. You can do one with living longer, uh, dying, dying younger, spending less and spending more, and then you can compare them side by side to see where those gaps come up. Okay, next slide, please. So let's talk about some strategies to bridge the gap. If you see a gap, that red that was showing up on the, um, on the projections, then uh, between what you will need and what you will have, it may feel overwhelming. However, know that you are not alone, and it's never too late to start saving and change course. There are many strategies you can use to bridge the gap between where you currently are and where you hope to be. Next slide, please. A great place to start with your goal of bridging a future retirement savings gap is by strengthening your current foundation today. No matter your age or situation, unplanned expenses and debt can be difficult to manage and may jeopardize many carefully made retirement plans. In the next section, we'll introduce ways to budget, plan for emergencies, and reduce debt. These steps can help you stay on track to meet your retirement goals, regardless of the surprises that life may throw your way. So before we go on, Maya, I'm going to ask you if we have any questions, if you want to stop the um slides for a minute and take a look and see if we have any questions that people would like answered before we continue. Yes, we do have a question um, from um, someone in the chat and they ask, how do you figure out the uh, social security tables if you don't expect to find work when you're 60 but want to wait until you're 70 to collect? How do you read the tables? Okay, that's a great question. And the answer to that is, the um, Social Security website has a calculator. And what you can do is on that calculator, you can enter all of your earnings and then put in zeros for the years between 60 and 70. And it will tell you what that number will look like. So if you go to ssa.www.ssa.gov, create an account for yourself and look for their online calculators, you can run a number of different hypotheticals. You can also, of course, call Social Security uh, and try and get an appointment to go in and meet with them in person, but you might have a lot more luck with the calculators. Awesome. Thanks, Renee. Those were all the questions. So far. Okay, let's go back then, and we'll start talking about strategies to bridge the gap. All right, next one. There you go. All right, everyone here probably knows what a budget is. You might even know how to create one. 
but we'd like to emphasize the importance of budgeting as it relates to retirement planning. Your ability to save more for retirement is dependent upon your ability to manage your money well. Budgeting to create more margin, the difference between your income and expenses, lower debt and save is a great first step. There are many sneaky ways that our money disappears each month. There's late fees and banking fees and subscriptions we haven't canceled, particularly to those streaming services that just kind of lure you in with, you know, just, just subscribe to this for a month and you can watch what you want and then you forget to cancel it. Um, subscriptions we haven't canceled, extras on our phone and cable accounts that we no longer need. By carefully monitoring these, you can free up hundreds of dollars each month. Your budget will help you plan your spending and your saving in advance. AARP offers a free online tool to help you set up your budget, the AARP Home Budget Calculator. Remember, a budget is an awareness tool first and a guide for saving and planning for retirement later. You may prefer a different method or system for budgeting, such as a spreadsheet um, or even a paper and pencil record or a software program. When doing a budget, I like you to think about adding in your needs and wants. So needs are the fixed things you have to have, such as your rent, your mortgage, insurance, food, and clothing. Your wants are the discretionary things that make life fun, such as dining out and travel, um, you know, going to the movies, entertainment. So make sure that you make a distinction in your budget between your needs and, you, and your wants, those things you absolutely have to have and those things that you would like to have. Next slide, please. Now let's think about emergency preparedness. Just 39% of Americans would be able to cover a $1,000 emergency if something unexpected happened. That's a huge number of people. And here's the issue. When we aren't prepared, we're more likely to pull out plastic to cover emergencies, which will likely not help us to achieve our goals. For most people, the best place for an emergency fund is a no fee or low fee bank account with no withdrawal penalties. Do not link your emergency fund to your checking account as an overdraft. That kind of defeats the purpose. If possible, consider setting up automatic savings options. If you could have a separate account with recurring automatic transfers, or if you're able to receive your paycheck by direct deposit, consider putting a certain percentage directly into your emergency savings rather than into your regular account. Financial planners typically typically recommend having three to six months worth of living expenses in an emergency fund. For many people, that's an intimidating amount. Your best bet is to simply start an emergency fund with whatever you have and add to it regularly. Treat this as a bill and pay yourself first so that when you're looking at every month, all of your bills lined up, put you on top of that pile. Next slide. If you're concerned about debt, you're not alone. The share of households led by older Americans that carry debt has risen steadily over the past two decades. So what's the best way to get those account balances down to zero once and for all? First, you have to plug the leak. You can't lower debt if you keep adding to it. One tactic is taking your credit cards out of your wallet or purse. Don't take them with you. Also, remove all one-click payments and stored credit card information from online sites to help you avoid temptation. Just tell you a funny story. Um, I, I like to read on my Kindle, which automatically directs me through Amazon, and inadvertently, I signed up for Amazon Prime. I didn't mean to do it, but it was a free month. And I found myself during that month spending a ludicrous amount of money because I had free shipping. So I have quickly canceled Amazon Prime. Make sure that you make that you understand what you have signed up to. Stick with the budget that you have created. Two popular debt reduction strategies worth considering are the debt snowball and the debt avalanche. The snowball method focuses on eliminating your smallest debt first, while the avalanche approach places the highest priority on eliminating the debt with the highest interest rate. Simply put, the snowmobile method is when you pay off your debts in order of smallest to largest, 
which allows you to gain momentum as each debt is paid and feel good about your accomplishment. The av avalanche method, on the other hand, is all about reducing the amount of interest you pay on your debt while you work toward a zero balance. With the avalanche method, you pay your debts off with the highest interest rate first. Using the avalanche method is preferred by most economists simply because you save money on interest. However, the effort is long-term and it can be harder to stay motivated than by using the snowball method. Whichever one you choose, be sure to stick with it and see the best debt reduction. For additional strategies customized to your situation, check out the AARP Money Map. Again, the link will be in your handout. Next slide, please. We've worked on calculating what you need for retirement, setting up emergency savings, and eliminating debt. Now let's move on to discussing strategies for increasing retirement savings. Next, please. Be sure you're getting the maximum matching funds at any of your employer-sponsored plans if available. Your employer may offer to match as long as you contribute at least a minimum amount. You'll, be want to you'll want to be sure to contribute at least that amount in order to receive the match. Through your employer plan, you can often set your retirement contribution to automatically increase by a certain percentage each year. This will allow you to increase your retirement contributions as your salary increases. This is called auto escalation, and if available, can be done through contacting your employer retirement account administrator. Also be sure to review your portfolio mix. You may have several options, such as a target date fund, which adjusts your portfolio mix automatically uh, to mix less aggressive and more conservative strategy the closer you get to retirement age or a moderate aggressive conservative portfolio based on the risk tolerance um, for your retirement plan. Consider consulting your employer's retirement plan administrator to learn more about your investment options. And if you need direct advice, you might want to consult with a financial advisor. The AARP Interview and Advisor Tool is a free resource to help you understand a financial advisor's credentials, compensation, and tips on how to get the conversation started around your needs. The tool is available for a smartphone, tablet, or computer, and the link for this tool is on your handout. Finally, if you're 50 or older, you may be able to take advantage of catch-up contributions, which means you can put in more money than anybody else because you're over the age of 50. Currently, it's an extra $7,500 in your 401ks and 403bs for 2023 for a total of $30,000 adjusted annually. Uh, let's just stop one more time, see if we have any questions before we go on. That doesn't look like there are any questions right now. All right, thank you. All right, so let's move on to retirement investing outside of your workplace. Um, and this is where we start talking about IRAs and Roth IRAs. There are also individual retirement account options you can explore in addition to or instead of employer-sponsored options. Be sure to speak to a financial professional about these decisions. First up, let's explore the Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is an after-tax individual retirement account. It's possible that the amount you earn can phase out your eligibility, so please do check on that. A great feature of the Roth is that you pay no tax on your gains when you take a qualified withdrawal. You can also withdraw Roth contributions without penalty or taxes as long as the money comes from the contribution and not the earnings. There's also no required minimum distribution at age 72, contrary to a traditional IRA. So um, the money that you have put into the Roth, you will currently pay the taxes on, but when you take it out during your retirement, it comes to you tax free. It's a really, really nice option. Let's contrast this with a traditional IRA. With a traditional IRA, you get a tax deferral on the money you contribute now. 
Meaning if you earn $100,000 and you put $5,000 into a traditional IRA, you're taxed as if you earn $95,000. So you're not, you're not paying any taxes on the money currently. However, when you take the money out, it's all taxed as ordinary income. If you take the money out before you're age 59 and a half, there's also a 10% penalty on that withdrawal. So one of these, as you can see, is a pre-tax plan, the traditional IRA, and the other is a post-tax plan, the Roth IRA. These plans also allow you catch-up contributions of an extra $1,000 in a Roth or a traditional IRA if you're age 50 or older. And yes, in some sense, in some cases, you may have a 401k and an IRA or a 401k and a Roth IRA. It all depends upon what your current earnings are. With either option, much like the employer-sponsored plans, review your portfolio mix and consult a professional as needed. Also consult with your accountant or CPA to determine your eligibility to contribute to these plans. Next slide, please. When preparing yourself for retirement and employing strategies to bridge the gap aren't enough, there are other ways to cut back. These strategies focus on cutting back and making lifestyle changes to meet your retirement needs. Next, please. Working longer. The question of when to retire is an important one. Generally speaking, the longer you work, the more money you will have coming in after retirement. Working longer means fewer retirement years you have to finance with your savings and allows you more years to increase your retirement savings and could also lead to higher Social Security benefits. Remember, it pays to wait. Working longer may also increase your pension benefits if you have one. So if possible, working longer, either full-time, part-time, is a potential strategy for you to leverage. Another important note, if you do decide to collect your Social Security early and work part-time, there's an earnings limit. In 2022, if you're, well, I sh should have updated it for 2023, but the concept is the same. If you're under full retirement age, the annual earnings limit is 21240 if you will reach full retirement age, the limit on your earnings for the months before full retirement age is 56,520. Meaning that if you decide to retire, for example, at age 62, well, I'm sorry, if you decide to collect social security at age 62, uh, but you also are going to keep on working, you have to be careful because there's a limit to what you can earn before your social security starts getting reduced. It's not a permanent reduction, you'll eventually get it back, but you have to think about why you're both working and collecting simultaneously. And also, again, be aware that working longer does not impact what you will get for social security. Social security does not look at your highest three years the way a pension does, Social Security looks at your highest 35. So working longer will not impact that negatively in any way. Next slide. Another way to deal with a gap in retirement funds is to downsize. If you are weighing a move, make careful comparisons. If you own a home and stay put, your current house might need major repairs. By contrast, if you move, there may be fix-up costs on your old house and moving expenses. If the move takes you from a house to an apartment, your rent payments may gradually go up. But remember, had you kept your old house or bought a new one, taxes, insurance, and upkeep costs would have risen too. A next idea would be to liquidate, sell items that you no longer need. Selling items online is a great way to get started but be realistic about your selling prices. Remember, they're used goods. Whichever app you choose, be sure to protect your personal information. Communicate only within the app and don't give out your email address, phone number, or address. If you choose to meet with a buyer, do so at a coffee shop, a police station, a school parking lot, or other public place. For additional strategies for bridging the gap, be sure to check out AARP, Ace your retirement. Next slide. 
Using the AARP retirement calculator, you will remember that Pat and Ronnie discovered they were going to have a shortfall of 38177.21 if they did not make any changes to their retirement savings plan before they retired as initially planned when they each turned 65. So what did Pat and Ronnie decide to do? Well, Pat and Ronnie came to our seminar, just like you've done. First, they created a budget allowing them to see the difference between their monthly income expenses, which is also called the margin. Their margin allowed them to build an emergency savings account, which will prevent the accumulation of debt or tapping into retirement savings to manage unplanned expenses. Next, they decided to tackle their credit card debt using the avalanche method. They listed their account balances from highest to lowest interest rates and then started paying off the highest interest rate card first. Pat and Ronnie found it best to build their emergency fund, then allocate their margin each month to paying off their credit card debt. Finally, Pat and Ronnie made the decision to work longer until age 70. Just those three extra years of working allowed them to have a surplus of $163,840.32 as opposed to a shortfall of 38,177.21. What a significant difference. Of course, these strategies don't work for every situation, but Pat and Ronnie were pleased that their planning paid off with a very optimistic retirement plan. So be sure to use the resources from this pr presentation to create your own retirement plan. Next slide, please. Finally, after thoughtfully planning for your retirement and building up your nest egg, you'll want to take steps to protect your assets. One important aspect of this is to protect yourself from fraud and scams. AARP has a wealth of resources to empower you. You can visit AARP Fraud Watch Network to learn more. The link is in your handout. You can even sign up for Watchdog Alerts, which will notify you of the latest scams and fraud tactics. If you or your loved one suspect a scam, call our free helpline. The number is also on your handout. Remember to reevaluate your savings and review your plan at least once a year. If you have a partner or spouse, be sure you're both privy to all of the household's financial information. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's session and the information and resources are of value to you. We've reviewed ways to determine how much money you will need for retirement compared to how much you are on track to have saved by retirement. We've reviewed strategies to bridge the gap if you discover that you have one. You can also visit learn.aarp.org where you will learn about events, webinars, and more important issues such as Medicare, Social Security, family caregiving, fraud prevention, work and jobs, and more. Visit learn.aarp.org. AARP also provides lots of opportunities to connect with your community and one another without leaving home. To try virtual offerings like movie watch parties, coffee chats, and exercise classes, visit aarp.org slash near you. So thank you. And let's open this up for questions, please, Maya. Awesome. Thank you for that presentation, Renee. It was super informative. We have a question from um, someone in the chat. They ask, is catch up for 401k type 7,523? Um, is there a catch up for the Roth IRA too? If so, what is the amount for 2020? Yes, there is a catch up for the Roth. And um, give me a minute to look that one up for you because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, 2023 Roth. Contribution limits. Um, so it is seventy five. It's sixty five hundred dollars if you're under the age of fifty. Seventy five hundred dollars if you're fifty or older. That is both for a Roth and for a traditional IRA, and that will get indexed next year for inflation. anyone else have questions, feel free to drop them um, in the Q&A and Renee will answer them. Let's 
so the there's a follow up that says, "Is that two different catch ups?" Um, I wish it is that two different catch ups between like the four hundred one k and the Roth. Yes, it is. Yes, so each each plan has their own catch up. So the four hundred one k plan. Once you reach age fifty, the retirement plans you are participating in your four hundred one k at work or four hundred three b. And your Roth IRA or and your traditional IRA all have catch ups. The um, Roth IRA and traditional IRA are, are lower amounts than the 401k. Awesome. And Diane asked, where can we access the information that you referenced? I believe you're going to get an email with it in the next couple of days, Diane. So you'll be able to access the recording and the slides. Um, so the next question, you said the max, um, is there a minimum amount Social Security pays? Um, I don't really know what the minimum is, but remember that you need to have uh, 10 years worth of work to at least receive Social Security. And then if you, and since they're averaging 35 years, if you don't have those 10 years, they average in zeros for all of those years. So if you if you don't have 10 years at all, you may be entitled to spousal benefits, which is if you're married, which is one half of what your spouse is receiving. Awesome. Um, the next question says, I plan to receive Social Security on my FRA, which is 67. How do I inform Social Security? All right. So this is where you get on and you create an account for yourself on the Social Security website, the SSA.gov, and you can apply for Social Security online. Um, I would say suggest that you apply three months before you would like to start receiving your Social Security benefits. Excellent. Really easy to do. And of course, you can always, if you want to, again, try to make an appointment and go to Social Security. But it's very, very easy to do online. Awesome. And Kenneth wants to know, what do you think about long-term care insurance? That's one of those it depends questions. Um, I'd love to say that I highly recommend it, but it really depends upon what your finances are, what your situation is, and um, what you're trying to insure. You know, it makes a difference if you're married, single, have children you're trying to protect. So I would say review the plans carefully. Make sure you talk with a qualified long-term care uh, insurance rep and look at the number of different plans that are out there. There are individual plans, shared plans, and hybrid plans. So, you know, please make sure you spend the time understanding what's available and what they what they provide for coverage. Awesome. And Jane has a question, I believe that's clarifying um, those catch-up numbers. And Jane asks, so 7,500 for 401k and 7,500 for Roth IRA for a total of 15? No, no, no. So um, there's a little bit of misunderstanding. So you can put 7,500 into your Roth IRA if you're over the age of 50, but your 401k limit is up to $30,000. So there's a catch up on your 401k as well that allows you to put 30,000 into your 401k and 7,500 into a Roth. Awesome. But again, let me just back up before we go on on that. Some of this is going to be dependent upon what your income is because the Roth has phase outs. If you earn above a certain amount of money, you can't fund a Roth. Um, someone is asking what age do you recommend to retire? You know, again, um, that's entirely what your lifestyle looks like. If you, um, it's doing this needs and wants analysis. What's your budget? How much money do you need to live the lifestyle that you have? And if you can afford to retire at age 50, go for it. But um, you know, you're not gonna have medical insurance. That's one of the things you need to think about. Medicare doesn't kick in in our country until you're 65 years old. And that can be a big expense. So think about how you're covering your medical needs. Um, some people work, you know, until into their, it just keeps their brains alive um, and they like to work. So they keep working well into their 70s, 80s, sometimes even in their 90s. Awesome. Someone I believe has a suggestion. So if this is you um, and I'm not doing your question or suggestion justice, please ask it again. 
Um, but they say I have a hybrid plan, whole life with a long-term care clause. Peace of mind as a solo feature. Good. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. But somebody there's you've done your research and you know what you've got. So that's all I'm suggesting. Do your research. <laughs> Perfect. And someone else is asking um, if you have any suggestions for solo agers. For, say that again. For people aging solo. For people aging solo. In other words, um, you, you're you're unmarried and don't have or don't have a partner, I'm assuming is what you're asking. And, um, you know, in terms of retirement, so I had said that you get the most money by waiting till age 70. I That's not always the best bet for someone who's single. I would suggest that you do a break even on your social security, do a calculation. Uh, I'd suggest that if you're aging solo that you consider, you know, where you want to be living. Do you want to be in a community with other people? Do you want to be in a retirement community? Are you thinking of, you know, eventually being an independent or assisted living? Look at what those costs are. It's all about spending the time to think about what your retirement looks like. And if you're not going to be with a partner, where do you want to be? And, and making sure you understand the costs. I know that's a very general kind of answer. Of course, not knowing all of you um, and what your individual situations are like. That's just sort of a very general kind of, kind of answer. Um, you know, if you want to be living alone, Think about what if you need to bring in care? What would care cost? Excellent. Um, does anyone else have any questions? I see we've gone through most of the ones in the chat, all the ones in the chat. Okay, good. So, now's the time if you have other questions for Renee. All things retirement, she's our person. All right, maybe we'll give people another minute or so. And if there are no more questions, we can wrap up. All righty. Oh, another question. Oh, Nancy says, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you all for being here tonight and uh, for joining joining me and uh, Maya on this AARP presentation. Definitely. I have a couple of quick announcements just before we all hop off. Um, so we hope that you found today's program informative and helpful. Um, look out for an email from us over the next couple of days with the recording and the slides. Um, and you can find more information about everything that was talked about today. Um, both in that email and on AARP's website. Um, and thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night, everyone. <laughs>